So I need a car and I ended up getting rid of mine just before lockdown, which ended up working out really well because I saved a boatload of money. Now I need one again because, well, I need one again. And I know this isn't technically business related and I want to be a business related channel, but I would love it if my channel had some aspects of cars in it because I absolutely love cars, every aspect of them. And I've actually been able to relate this particular video back to business and you're going to find out how. Now the car is none other than a Tesla. And in this video, I want to tell you exactly how much it costs to actually buy a Tesla in the UK because I couldn't actually find any videos on this. And I wanted to tell you exactly how much it costs to buy in the UK. And I've been discussing it with my accountant because obviously I'll be buying it through the business and I want to really break it down so you can see how much it could potentially cost you if you're even thinking about getting a Tesla. Now, as I said, I would absolutely love it if my channel was business and car related, but who knows? Maybe I'll make a second car channel just because I genuinely love cars, but please subscribe anyways. I hope you like this video and we're going to get straight into it. First, we're going to actually build the Tesla. I want really, really quickly. I don't want to waste any of your time, but we're going to build the Tesla. And then when we get to the end, I'm going to talk to you about the different purchase options and all the different incentives in the UK. If you're a business, if you're not a business and you know everything you really need to know. So let's start with you know, building, and I'm talking about the Model 3 here, let's do a custom order, okay? And we'll do this as quickly as possible. I've built this car about 25 times in the last day, so I think I know what I want. All right, we're gonna go with a long range, okay? Just because I want those extra miles. Let's go next. All right, the next thing, I was going to change the paint color, but after realizing it costs a thousand pounds and lots of people told me not to, I thought I'd save money. However, I will change the wheels. I do prefer the 90 inch sport wheels. I just think the other wheels are ugly. So once we've done that, right, I'm not gonna get a tow hitch because I'll probably end up getting a roof rack. So let's move on. And now we've got either a black interior or a white interior. Now, again, I was gonna go for white interior, but then I thought white on white doesn't look so good. If the car was black, I would go for white, but because the car is white, I'm gonna go for a black interior. And plus I'm gonna change and make it carbon fiber on the inside, because oh, that would be so nice. Right, once I've done that, let's go over to next. Autopilot is included, but full, full self-driving capability costs a further 6,800 pounds. I'm going to leave that out for now, just because it's really not necessary, especially here in the UK. And that is it, see, super quick, right? So now let's talk about the different finance options. So we've got personal, we've got business. With personal, you have cash, personal contract hire, then PCP and also Tesla loan. Tesla loan is the lowest. I think it's 3.99% APR. PCP is, I believe, 4.9%. Personal contract hire is, well, it doesn't actually say what this is, so I'm going to leave that one out. And then you can just, you know, splash some cash. And then on top of that, you've got business. Now, when you do business, the Tesla loan disappears and you've got cash, PCP, and higher purchase, okay? Now, the interest rates are slightly high. You've got 4.9% on the higher purchase, which I guess is the same for personal. The only difference is there's none of that Tesla loan at 3.9%. Now, what you could do, a fifth option, is actually get a loan from another company, like a Tesco loan or a Sainsbury's loan, something like that, which usually come in at about 2.3 to 3%. You could loan the full amount cash money, then you can go and use that money to pay for the car in cash and just pay off that loan and the interest rates are much, much better. So that is also a very, very good way of doing it. Now you can see here on my screen, it says ways that you're saving all this, these different kinds of money, all the different incentives, the vehicle excess duty, the, the fuel saving, the this, the London congestion charge, all of the blah, blah, blah. There's so much saving going on here. But it's really confusing, especially for, you know, just someone browsing to buy a new car. They don't understand what any of this means. So let's break down the different incentives that are applicable to this car. You've got benefit in kind, you've got VAT, and you've got, well, you've got the tax write-off. So let's go and start with the first one. You've got benefit in kind. What is benefit in kind? Well, basically, when a company buys you a car, it's assumed that that car is going to be a company car, and you have to pay a tax to use that car on a personal level. So if you want to do the school run or you want to go to Tesco and buy some food or whatever it may be. However, with a Tesla, you have a 0% benefit in kind. This is huge. This means you can get a company car, right? Basically a Tesla company car and you don't have to pay anything every single month. So let, let's have a look at the difference, right? And it actually does this cool little calculator. So if my car is a Model 3 long range costing 49 
thousand pounds. The tax bracket, uh, you choose your tax bracket, so 40%, 45% or whatever, right? So I'm gonna go 45%. And the, well, it's zero benefit in kind for the Tesla, but if I had a normal or an executive diesel saloon, which kind of matches up with this Tesla Model 3, I would be paying £325 every single month in order to have this car through the business. That is a lot of money. And you could be thinking, well, then just don't do it through the business. Just do it on a personal level. Don't buy it through the business. You don't have to do any of this benefit in kind. However, that means you can't use the car as a company write-off. And that leads me on to my next one, which is 100% tax write-off, which means the entire cost of the car gets written off your 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 business's income. So let's say my business earns 100 grand in year one and I buy this car, it costs 50 grand. I'll only need to pay tax on the 50 grand, which is actually really good for my current position because hopefully down the line, I wanna buy a house. So I will be able to use my business to buy a house, but I won't have to pay as much tax because if I buy this car, my tax goes all the way down. Now I know that sounds really confusing and it's still messing with my head and it messes with my head every single day. But it's as simple as that, right? You buy the car, it can be 100% tax write-off if it's bought through the business. Now, the third incentive is, well, if you bought through the business, you get the VAT money back. So with this car, I believe it's 8,000 pound VAT. Let's have a look. It says over here, you've got 8,573 pounds of VAT, which is value added tax, I want to say. I want it right, it's value added tax. Why, why, why would I? Why would I doubt myself? Right, VAT is value added tax. And with a Tesla, if you buy it for the business and you use it for business purposes, you could actually be entitled to getting that VAT money back, which again, for someone like me, where I will only be using this or mainly be using this for business, right? In fact, I think I will only be using this for business, right? I will be able to get eight and a half thousand pounds back in VAT, which is a huge amount of money straight from the get-go. Now, on top of all of this, you also have the government's £3,000 electric car grant. This used to be a bit more, it's gone down, and I feel like it's gonna go down even more, which is the reason why I wanna get in on it before it goes down anymore. But you have that grant, so the car costing, you know, 48,440, I think that's inclusive of the 3,000 government grant. And just so you know, for that government grant, you to be eligible for that government grant, the car has to cost no more than 50,000 pounds. And from what I was told at Tesla, extras on the car, so if the car costs 50,000 pounds and then you upgrade the seats or you upgrade the stereo system and the car ends up costing 55,000 pounds, you are still eligible for that 3,000 pound government grant because the base cost of the car was still 50,000 pounds or lower. Now this is what Tesla told me. I don't know if they're 100% right. I believe they are right because they probably know what they're talking about. However, that is just, that's how that goes. Now, as well as all of that, we could be discussing, you know, it's like the petrol savings, the tax, the, 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 the tax disc savings, insurance, all of these different elements, you know, you just, there's a lot of, a lot of saving. And especially if you use of people's affiliate links. I don't actually have one at the moment, and if I do, it will be the link in the description. But if you buy a Tesla through someone's affiliate link, you actually get 500 or 1,000 free miles to use, which is a huge amount of miles. That's like 150 pounds of petrol. So those are what I believe are all the incentives to buy a Tesla. And when I worked it out, if I bought a Tesla today with all the incentives, it would cost me under 20,000 pounds, which for a Tesla, is insane. That is a very, very small amount of money for the for the car that you're getting, considering a Ford Focus costs more than 20,000 pounds, right? So it is a lot of car for a little money, but that's only if you were able to get access to all of these benefits. Not everyone can get access to these benefits. And let me know in the comments down below if you are able to get access to any of these benefits. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you, at the end of the day, 20 grand, still a lot of money to drop on a car, and I agree, it's still a lot of money. However, I think for what the car is, for the future proofing of it, for you know the climate uh, benefits, from the no getting petrol anymore benefits, that wasn't even good English, but on all the benefits, 20,000 doesn't seem so crazy anymore. So like I said, let me know in the comments down below what you think, have you ever considered a Tesla? Would you get a Tesla if you could? And, uh, and yeah, hopefully, and also just by the way, for anyone who is 
not new to my channel. If you watch my other business videos, let me know what you think of these Tesla videos and car videos in general. Should I make a second channel or should I just post randomly on this channel? What do you think I should do? The question is, now that I've worked out the full price, should I buy one?